Good morning. I'm Cody Robert Judy, and this is a voice crying in the wilderness. Repent, repent, and prepare ye for the coming of the Lord. Today is um, April 1st, 2019. And um, the Lord gave me a word uh, for you today. And if I was to uh, title this video, I would I was in, I would entitle it uh, <clears throat> maybe I'll have to think about it more, but something to do with how. To overcome molestation and overcoming sins that are perpetuated to the third and fourth generations. <clears throat> now, while this does address some sensitive uh, circumstances criteria I would provide a caution and parental discretion but that's exactly who it's for and specifically why the Lord gave me the information um, that he gave me um, there's a lot of man haters out there who are angry and mad at men because of their testimony of molestation being molested by fathers by brothers uncles family members it's a big problem Now, as a victim, um, of molestation, the first thing that you want to get over is your own problem. The second thing you want to get over is not perpetrating the same actions that have caused you pain <clears throat> and there's some specific words of counsel the Lord has given on the subject because it's ruining people's lives and the Lord is concerned because he loves his children he loves his sons and daughters he cares about them and I can think of no greater reason why he would offer his counsel and I can see no other reason in overcoming our sins and our iniquities 
that we wouldn't or shouldn't seek his counsel. Shame by the devil is used flagrantly. He loves the tool. The devil loves the tool of shame. He loves the tool of lies and basically everything God told you not to do. Um, as I specified in the title of this, I want to go to the confounding and um, monumentally huge important scripture. Where the Lord tells us that he will visit the sins of the fathers to the third and fourth generations. And it's right here in Deuteronomy, verse 9 of chapter 5. I'm having kind of a hard time with this lighting today because... It's light outside. <laughs> and it's still kind of shadowy here. But uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 9, we see that sentence almost. It's a sentence. And in our challenge, we have two choices. Choose life or choose death. Those are the two choices. In my own grief, in my own problems, I thought if the Lord visits the sins upon the heads of the children to the third and fourth generations, then why would it not be my choice to try to break the cycle of abuse and stop it and how to do that with the Lord's counsel is with his wisdom and understanding and I believe that can help a lot of people and that would be the goal here with this video and I've written a lot about it too Because it affects so many people, so many children, so many adults. It's a problem that needs to be dealt with. Now the Lord says in chapter, uh, verse 9 of chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers, Upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me. Now that should be a huge incentive for anyone who hates God. To realize that that hatred is simply going to be fed the third and fourth generations in other words the cycle of abuse will continue you're not doing anything it's it's your choice it's your right to stand up to the devil say I don't want to be part of this fucking game anymore I want to heal I want to be healed and I don't I want to be a good parent and I don't want to perpetrate 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 I don't want to turn into a perpetrator as a victim that is the single most loved 
tool of the devil is to turn a victim into a perpetrator of the same sin. And if that doesn't scare the crap out of you, say to yourself as a victim of being molested that you want to teach your children to be molesters. If you say that, then you're no victim. You're a perpetrator. And if you don't want to be healed, and if you don't want to see the light, and if you don't want to come to the light, then you are set in your sin. And you will, in your teachings, in your actions, do exactly that. Become the perpetrator. And I'm talking to everyone. I'm talking to women. I'm talking to men. I'm talking to parents. Now, if the Lord visits the sin to the third and fourth generation, how in the world can you stop and break this cycle of abuse? That should be your main focus and your main goal in realizing if you don't break the chain, it's going to be passed down. And we've got a millennial generation that needs to be parented properly. A thousand years of peace, that should be our goal. Zion should be our goal. You may hate God, but I'll bet you love your children. He loves you. Now, let me just quickly tell you of the dream I had last night, which brought this subject up. I saw a woman, she was fairly tall, she was flipping me off, giving me the bird, basically someone who's angry at God. I saw her look in a basement, she was in a basement, and I saw her look and witness her father with her sister French kissing her French kissing her sister his daughter A molestation was in the process now in healing this and in choosing life there are many different circumstances and situations and I don't intend to address every single one of them and I realize that they are very different I do have a psychology major So I understand that there's a lot of different perspectives, but in the interest of humanity, we've got to open the discussion up. We've got to open the discussion up. And we've got to open it up with truth. We've got to open it up with light, with healing, with consideration, and counsel, and wisdom, and above all, understanding. Now the next scripture I want to go to is in Isaiah. Isaiah 49, chapter 49. Sorry, I got to use this light too. I'm using about three lights here. Um, speaking of light, um, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 49, and we're going to start in verse 4. 
Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and the work with my God. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him through Israel, though Israel be not gathered. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, verse 7, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nations abhorreth, to him whom the nations abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel and he shall choose thee <clears throat> for a light to the Gentiles A light. A light is a new dawning. A light is a, a beacon of truth in the darkness. <sighs> now, in consideration of what I just said, as far as helping to heal society has instituted a horrible thing in the shame of someone shaming of someone who has been molested in two different ways Number one, directly to the person that was involved in the molestation, incest, or family sexual circumstances. The first thing that needs to be addressed in truth and I say this with all soberness and heaviness of the circumstances of which you might find yourself or have found yourself in as an adult or a child the very first thing that you have to do is stop lying to yourself and quit hiding behind the lies of society's shame upon you. And that comes from your own witness and your own stopping the rehearsing over and over again in your mind that you were molested or involved in a circumstance where you did not cry out for help and address that soberly 
in the respect of truth, you have got to go back to your adolescent or juvenile mind. And say to yourself, the emotions that were true, the feelings that were true. You've got to hold those in truth and light. It is a pretty rare exception, except in the cases of rape, that is more on the adult side of the situation where if a woman was being raped she would be calling out and screaming and resisting any way that she could part of this truth is in whatever circumstances and um, portion of your life that you were in when this happened. Now the example that was shown to me last night in the dream was one of mostly adult figures. Um, I want to say that the the kids or the sisters in that dream were on the of the age of around I want to say 25 to 30 and the father upwards of 50 <clears throat> but we must realize that accountability in the Lord's mind as far as wrong and right begins at the age of eight and that from the ages of eight and below the children are considered um, innocent in their ability to navigate right and wrong And after the age of eight, they've acquired a little bit more handle on being able to do their own discernment. Now, after the age of eight, you know, I'd say between eight and 12, especially for women or girls, they develop much faster than boys sexually. And so do their curiosities. So do their sense their 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 uh, their feelings, their sensitivities, their desires, and their um, exploratory natures of satisfaction. And in that respect, we, a victim who's been victimized in her mind or his mind by the circumstances of what they term molested or in, in, uh, incestuous relationships. Uh, took place they have to come to a terms of truth in their own acknowledgement of the satisfaction and the desire for the action <clears throat> what I'm saying bluntly is that It is much healthier for you to over, to, in overcoming 
even societies perpetuated shame. To say and to recognize anything about the experience that you actually enjoyed. You know what? I was feeling those hormones racing through my body. And uh, they were jumping like you can't believe. And I desired and I wanted to know what it felt like. And it felt good, you know. And then all of a sudden I learned that society said it was shameful. And so I started to incorporate that shame. And it was poison. Now, in healing, healing these actions or these circumstances or situations, molestation, sexual um, agreement, um, consensual agreement, even in a juvenile's mind. Recognition of your own desires in that particular state that you were in is paramount in overcoming the shame that you found out society felt about that relationship. Now, in a healing projection, a healing projection, not a victimization projection. There's a difference. In a healing projection, it is wise to search the scriptures and find out if there is any situation that happened like the situation you were in or experienced where it was acceptable and looked upon as good or justified by the Lord. And in this particular circumstance and situation we're talking about, We would go to Genesis, the book of Genesis, and let's see here. I want to go back to. Um, Abraham's time and there are circumstances and situations where a union was created between what society has called the most abhorred relationship, the face of the earth, that between a father and daughter. And that is found in Genesis chapter 19, verse, uh, we'll start in 20, verse 26. Now the circumstances also promote the question to you, the quote-unquote victim, if you want to continue to call yourself that, and I hope you don't, in recognizing any pleasure, any excitement, any satisfaction, 
that you received in that union which society has perpetuated must be vocalized as shame who wants to be a victim all their life I mean is that any way to live Well, let's go back to Genesis chapter 19 and we'll start in verse 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. <clears throat> well, let's go back to verse 24 so you know what's going on. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. This is when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And he overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife, Lot's wife, looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning in the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked upon Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities of in the which Lot dwelt. And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountains and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zor and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. And the firstborn said unto the younger, Our father is old and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us after the manner of all the earth to reproduce. Come, and let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink that wine that night. And the first born went in and lay with her father, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass in the morning that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night with him, this night also, and go thou in and lie with him, that we may preserve seed of our father. We have two women here agreeing to polygamy. And they made their father with the father and the daughter. And they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, or, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father, and the firstborn bare a son, and he called his name Moab, and some the same is the father of the Moabites unto this day, and the younger she also bare a son, and called his name Ben-Ami, the same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. <clears throat> now in the preservation of Lot in his line, the Lord certainly knew what was going to happen. And it's interesting to note that the wife of Lot is the one that turned back towards the city in her own desire for the city and all of its pleasures and all of its delicacies and all of its um, societal ways and she was the one that was turned into the pillar of the salt how could we compare that to the mothers of today would they go back and look back to the cities that are infested 
with sins and iniquities, perpetuating shame to the third and fourth generations in what they call righteousness and holiness, which is nothing but wickedness. <clears throat> so, in at least finding a circumstance and situation in the Bible where the daughters lay with the father and it was considered righteousness at least in finding that you find righteousness and you free yourself from shame or guilt in answering the question that if you were in that circumstance would you do the same thing would you perpetuate humanity with seed or let's just say you were the only person you your sister your father were the only person left on earth would you perpetuate the seed or would you just let humanity die out in a recognition of truth you wouldn't let humanity die out you do the exact same thing if you're being honest with yourself and not continuing to lie to yourself that is important you've got to get over lying to yourself and lying with the lies that society has taught you not that we are condoning that relationship in this modern times we are simply looking in history at circumstances and situations that relate positively to your situation your circumstance Abraham himself was married to Sarah Sarah was his cousin we know that through if man could count the sands on the earth they still could not count the righteous seed the Lord has given Abraham and in truth twice Abraham was told by the Lord to tell Sarah to refer to him as her brother twice in the circumstances that preserved Abraham's life from those who would have killed him for her because she was so fair and beautiful Now, that's kind of a little beginning of addressing the circumstance or situations in the light of the Lord, in counsel and in understanding and in truth. Now, the next thing we want to address is that little portion of wisdom we started out with where the Lord says he will visit the sins of the generation to the third and fourth generations and in your sincere desire not to perpetrate the same now I'll address this mostly to the women in truth it could apply to the men if something has victimized you so bad that you shudder and 
shake from it and wake up in night sweats and do not desire that for your children. We have to look at all of the extenuating circumstances that led up to your own actions if we take a little bit of responsibility for ourselves even as juveniles from the age of eight up what do we have to address in let's just say your father's desire and your desire for your father and let's just for argument's sake say that your father was your virgin love he popped your cherry and it's very difficult not to love in some degree especially any enjoyment that you may have had I mean you've got to lay down the truth and you gotta stick with your feelings at the time that was happening not what they are now you've got to take responsibility and accountability for your own self And the fact that you didn't run out screaming to your mother, you didn't scratch, you didn't claw away from your father. Maybe the first time, like I said, it was uh, exploratory, this feels good, uh, I've got feelings, I've got sensations. And I don't know how to handle those, and this is feeling pretty good, you know. We have to address, number one, those feelings honestly. Number two, the circumstances in which your father was messing around in. Those circumstances also play in to addressing whether you are going to perpetuate the molestation of children to the third and fourth generation. Because here's how that happens. You follow the trail. You follow the yellow brick road. And we see so many times that the wife had a problem. Her sins included greed, covetousness, jealousy of her husband. And then she came to a time in her life where she didn't want sex. And she told him to put a sock on it. In other words, the love of his life, his mate, was refusing him. Refusing him, refusing his desires, and perpetuating with her own shame the fact that he should just put a sock on it. And in nowadays, she would shame him if he turned to pornography, if he masturbated. And mind you, this circumstance of marriage affects a lot of people. And 
in many circumstances, many situations, a woman is almost acting insanely in the fact that she no longer has two hands. She can't give him a hand because she doesn't feel like having sex down there. She says, go in the bathroom and do it, and perpetuates him into the closet. Now, if you wanted to make a summation of that in the Lord's eyes, you'd have to say she's out of her rabbit-ass fucking mind. If she thinks she can control all the testosterone in his body, now, that might be possible for the strongest members of society. But you go down the ladder and you will find the weakest members of society that basically say, screw that, I'm not going to put a sock on it. I'll go get my satisfaction from somewhere else. And the family is the very first place they go. So we see that those three great big sins, the jealousy of the wife to keep her husband from another adult woman who could take out his, his sexual, orient, sexual desire with in a healthy manner, when she didn't feel like being touched at all, she didn't feel like have an intimacy. She didn't feel like giving him a hand. She didn't feel like participating any iota. And in that respect, she expected him to basically be a woman and forget about all his testosterone and all his desires and all his passions. Well, that's just not the way the Lord made the, Lord made the world, is it? And so you're actually going against the laws of nature there. And so you've got to admit that your mother had a role in this. Because instead of going out and finding another adult, mature lady for her husband, when she was not willing and able or whatever the circumstances were to satisfy him. She chose to tell him to pent that up. Now I always compare the sexual energy of a man to a, a, a bottle root beer, Coca-Cola, wine, whatever you want to, and you shake it up. And if you don't pop the cork, it comes out in a perverted way. So our goal ought to be to channel that energy in a positive, healthy, adult fashion. And if that means you, you don't feel like it, that means you've got the responsibility to help him channel that in a positive, healthy way that does not involve family members. And a woman who is married to a man is one flesh. So she has every obligation responsibility and accountability for his flesh as well as her own now the last scripture I want to refer to that is in Isaiah I go back to Isaiah chapter 3 Chapter 4, Chapter 5. Go read those. 
and a woman's lust. Also, for all the crisping pins and the Lord's rebuke to the women. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths over these sins. The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof, for they have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. You're responsible. You're accountable. And the Lord says, Moreover, the Lord, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and minting as they go and making a tingle with their feet, the forward the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. The Lord will discover their secret parts. Now, let's go over to chapter 4 and recommend and see the Lord's recommendation. And in that day, what day is that? It is the day... It is the day um, in verse three of chapter four, and it shall come to pass that he that is left that that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem, or shall we say the children of Israel. Holy, okay? So that is the day that we're talking about when he says, in that day. Seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name to take away.